Hi, it's Adam here from adaminsights.com. So, Adobe RGB versus sRGB. Why, when we're taking photos, do we want to consider using one over the other? I think there's a lot of debate and a lot of misconceptions about Adobe RGB versus sRGB in the photography community, and I want to try and clear that up as best I can. If you've got any extra information you want to share or you want to leave uh, your opinion on it as well, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. So why should we consider using Adobe RGB over sRGB? Well, the short answer is if you're taking photos that are going to end up uh, being printed into a book, a magazine, a newspaper, or a billboard, uh, something that is going through a professional press and therefore your image is going to have to go through a proper conversion to CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, then you should consider shooting or then you should consider editing and outputting in Adobe RGB before converting to CMYK. If you're taking photos that are going to end up on the web, social media, or you're taking them down to your local retailer to get printed, then you should stick with sRGB. Something else we should actually get out of the way really early on here is that if you're actually shooting raw in your digital camera, then whether you've got Adobe RGB or sRGB selected as your color space in your camera's menu has no effect. In your camera's menu, the selection of sRGB versus Adobe RGB will only affect the JPEG, or if your camera outputs it, the TIFF file. Let's just clear up a big misconception about Adobe RGB. Adobe RGB does not record a wider range of colors than sRGB. Uh, I think that that misconception is out there because of this diagram that floats around on the net a lot. We've probably all seen it in Google image search when we've uh, previously been re researching Adobe RGB. I certainly misinterpreted it myself the first time because, hey, it, it looks like, and it definitely seems to imply, that Adobe RGB is capturing more colors than sRGB. But let's make this really clear. The amount of colors and the dynamic range that your camera is really capable of is dependent on the bit depth of the sensor, e.g. if you've got an 8-bit, 10-bit, 12-bit, 14-bit, or even a 16-bit sensor in your camera. Choosing to use Adobe RGB, either in your camera or in your editing software, is not going to magically uh, give you a wider range of colors. It's not going to magically make your camera record more colors. That's just not the case. What Adobe RGB is actually doing is it's capturing the same amount of colors as sRGB, but those colors are on a different place on the RGB spectrum. They tend to be further apart and have less graduation between them, uh, or offer less graduation in your image, uh, between uh, different shades of a color than sRGB. So why is that? Well, let's take a step back. All light that we see and that our cameras see is made up of a combination of red, green, and blue. So red, green, and blue all mixed together at varying levels can create any color that uh, we want to see or capture with our cameras. Right. When we convert a red, green, blue image that is additive, so red plus green plus blue, every layer makes the uh, color, or builds uh, the color, and uh, more a more intense red, green, blue will ultimately deliver a brighter color. And uh, 255 red plus 255 green plus 255 blue will ultimately just equal white. When we convert red, green, blue to CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which is more of a destructive way of uh, building colors, we end up uh, getting a color shift. So uh, sometimes that color shift uh, between an sRGB file to a CMYK file can actually be quite dramatic. But what Adobe RGB was designed to do was capture colors on the red, green, blue spectrum, but then 
try and match them as close as possible to their CMYK equivalent so that the shift between what the photographer takes, sees on their screen, and then sees printed in the magazine or book uh, that's gone for a CMYK press was minimal. The only people that really tend to shoot Adobe RGB and JPEG on their cameras are newspaper photographers. So these are people who are taking a photograph that within hours might need to hit the press. And so they actually don't then have the time to play around with editing a RAW. So they just want to take a JPEG file, download that to their network at the print house, they're, then the pre-press guys need to pick that up, put it onto and put it into a page layout and send it off to uh, press straight away. Normally in my workflow, I download my raw files into Adobe Lightroom. I edit them as uh, to what I want uh, them to look like. If I want to print them locally, I tend to print straight out of Lightroom because I get a beautiful match with my Epson printer to my computer screen with Lightroom. If I want to share an image on social media or on my blog, then I just output a JPEG sRGB file. If I know that I'm handing over that file to a graphic designer or a pre-press house, or if I'm going to use that file in a book or a magazine myself uh, that I'm laying out in InDesign, then I'll edit uh, the image in Lightroom, and then I'll output a 16-bit Adobe RGB image from Lightroom. Normally I'd do it in a TIFF uh, file. That then means I've got an RGB image that is already very close to what it's going to look like when it's converted to CMYK. So I'll then bring it into Photoshop. I then might make final adjustments uh, to the image, uh, fix up any uh, blemishes or things like that that I want to sort out. Then I'll convert it down to an 8-bit file into CMYK. And if I choose to do that with an Adobe RGB image, the color shift that I see when I go to the CMYK is minimal than if I was to do it with an sRGB image. So let's have a look at an example. Here's a photo I took of a building. We've got a nice uh, bright blue uh, polarized sky, some brilliant vibrant greens, we've got some shadows and we've got some highlights. It's a great image to uh, have a look at this. So I've outputted it from Lightroom in sRGB and Adobe RGB. If I now convert the image to 8-bit CMYK to make it print ready, wow, there's quite a lot of shift happening there in the colors. But if I do the same with the Adobe RGB image, converting it to CMYK, 8-bit color, the shift is minimal. The reason that the shift is minimal is because in outputting the Adobe RGB image from Lightroom, Lightroom has chosen colors that are closer to what they would be when they're converted to CMYK. That isn't taken into account when you output an image in sRGB. So you could argue, why don't you just use Adobe RGB all the time? Well, the thing is there is you can get some very dramatic shifts sometimes uh, in your colors. And so sometimes misusing Adobe RGB results in uh, some real unwanted effects in your images. If you are just wanting to uh, share your images uh, electronically uh, or print them uh, with a retailer, use sRGB.